with me here in the studio today is a global innovator, entrepreneur, educator, a director, an author, and also a transformation agent. She's somebody who has thrived in growing people, especially the youth, and she's here to tell us what it involves and entails to do all of this, you know, all encompassing. I'm talking about no other person but Adetola Salao. Welcome. Thank you. You look beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who is Adetola Salao? Wow. I will say I am a social innovator okay. working on transforming how we go about learning okay. and making learning more relevant mm. and more connected to the real world for our children so that we can eradicate poverty and also all the, a lot of the challenges that we have here in Africa. Okay, so did you just, was this a childhood dream or is it a yearning that rose up from an experience for you? It's a mixture. It's some of it, yes, from my childhood. What I experienced in school, um, in secondary school here in Nigeria. And then also when we relocated to the United States, seeing how the society was, how important education was, the difference it made. And then coming back and experiencing the shock of, instead of things moving forward, it feels like you know things retrogress. It was really sad and wanting to make a difference, wanting to make a change because I really believe beyond the shadow of doubt that education really is the force that will drive prosperity, it will really drive change, it will really drive development. Okay, so, so since you moved back actually to Nigeria to, you know, um, follow up on this dream and uh, gain fulfillment from it, I hope or believe, uh, <laughs> How has it been? How can you grade education 10 years ago and now in Nigeria? Not a good grade. Okay, <laughs> why is that? Um, a lot of policies, a lot of our hopes and dreams, what we had hoped we were going to see in education the past 10 years, we've been all talk and really not much action. So I wouldn't give us a good grade. I don't even want to mention the grade on air because it's something that is really 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 disheartening mm. okay so really now what are some of those things that you actually feel uh, the challenges we're experiencing in the area of education in Nigeria what are the things that are lacking in the system that should have been in place long ago or maybe even now I'm going to mention but I will mention the biggest ones we need um, the, the, the program that was going on earlier before now they had mentioned some of it we need to have more qualitative teaching. We need to have better trained teachers. Infrastructure is some of our problems. Some of the schools are really, really horrible, dismal conditions. So when you say the schools, are you just talking about tertiary institutions? Or All both of the primary them, and secondary? primary, secondary. There are, a lot of them are in really, really horrible conditions. When you see what educational institutions look like in northern, when I mean northern, I mean more developed nations. Uh, everybody always mentions Finland, so let me stay away from Finland. Let's talk about Singapore, Sweden, of course, UK, Canada. When you see what educational institutions look like, the environment, the learning environment, you see how conducive it is. It makes children excited to learn and excited to, to participate and in be engaged in learning. And then you come here and it's a really dark room and just the board and an enormous number of children in the classroom. It's not something that makes you excited about learning. Okay, but yeah. some people actually said they coped in those conditions and they still did good. But right now we need to understand that that was good for the 19th century model of learning and the way everything was set up then. Things are totally different now. Now it's more about skills. If I'm in a room like that and the teacher needs to build up my skills, it's going to be really hard for me to get the teacher to pay attention to helping me to boost up the skills that I need in that kind of environment that is really, really noisy, not conducive, and they really can't tell what I'm lacking at. Because learning really is a very, very personal thing. It's not uh, one size fits all. Okay, so what, what other challenges do we have? Funding, funding is a big one. We are not, I mean, it's a catch-22. We're not putting enough money into programs, educational programs, at the same time, the money that is put in is not being spent right. Yeah. We're spending more money on a lot of infrastructure. Well, it's good to build schools, but 
the schools itself won't teach. They would not give the students the knowledge they need. The people who are going to actually give them that knowledge are the teachers. And yes, I'm back to teachers again. We need to build the teachers. I, I like to emphasize teachers a lot because it really comes down to them in the end. That interaction is between teacher and student. It is not between the board or whatever fancy equipment. It's teacher and student. Okay, so what about the issue of teachers? I remember a certain time when uh, one of our governors uh, actually made a test in his own state. I'm talking about Governor Elwifai. And he said uh, a couple of thousands of teachers, a number of thousands of teachers actually failed the basic tests that were put for them. Now, aside them failing the test, there have been also this issue of you just mentioned relationship between teacher and student. Do you think the average Nigerian teacher today in, let me put it this way, the average government school in Nigeria has that capacity, you know, to actually teach as it were? I remember. I know you, you, you want to save face for them. No, no, I'm not going to save face for them. Okay. I'm gonna, I call it spade a spade. I say what's bad and I also say what's good. I was on air a couple of, I think it was two years ago and someone called in and was really attacking teachers. Like I said, <laughs> I will say what's good and I'll say what's bad. On one hand, yes, a lot of uh, our, some of our teachers, I shouldn't say a lot because there are a lot who are really working hard. Some of our teachers are substandard, but then again, we have to look at our society in context. Are we really giving our best to our teachers? And there are a lot of people that I've met who really want to teach. But because we're not really taking care of our teachers, teacher welfare is really, really low in this nation right now. And they say, you know what, even if I love to teach, even if I know that's really what I should do, I can't take care of myself. I can't take care of a family that I want to have by teaching. So mm. they, they say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. Mm. And can you really blame them? Look at the salaries of the teachers and teacher welfare. It's not just salaries alone. Even the way we talk to the teachers, the way we interact with them in the schools, the way we speak about them. It's really not encouraging. So it's a catch-22 because we need to also, we're talking about recruiting the right people, but what are we also putting in place to make sure that they themselves are built up? What are the processes in getting the right people, in making sure that they have the right skills? Let's go back and see what we're teaching them at the, the COEs and where else, do they, all the different NCs, programs they have, yeah. yes, that, that they have for them. Okay, so now you are the founder of the Charisma for You Educational Foundation? Yes, now, what are some of the common issues relating to education that you or your foundation has had to deal with um, since it started? Our major one, still <laughs> teacher being teachers, being highly qualified. And what we've been doing is we've been running projects where we train teachers, particularly in STEM education. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. And not just private schools. We've been working with some private schools, but you see... Uh, my fondness will always be for the public sector because, first of all, the impact. I remember there was a program that I had last year, and one of the public school teachers, a secondary school teacher, told me that she teaches oh, close to 200 students that term. At the same class? Different yes, classes. different classes, but her total number of students that mm. she, is, she reaches, she's talking to, she's working with. 200 students, and I'm like, you see, this is the reason why working with these public school teachers is really important. That one teacher is 200 students. So imagine we're passing all these skills to her, we're boosting her readiness in making sure that her lessons are more interactive in mm. science, and when she's teaching them mathematics, they are, she's making sure that the lessons are more engaged and they're relevant, they're connected to the real world, the children are actually carrying out projects. When she's passing that to those 200 children, those 200 children also get in touch with other children. And it is, it's, a, it's a cycle. It continues. So I love public school teachers. I love working with them because their impact is enormous. Okay. But unfortunately, it is not easy to get access to public school teachers unless you create relationships with our government and symbiotic, which is what we did, symbiotic relationship with other foundations that have access so that we can reach out to these public school teachers. And also, another area that we also need to understand is a lot of private schools in Lagos are not the glitzy private schools we think of. A lot of them are actually low-cost private schools. Some of them, they pay as much as 50 naira a day for the students to come to school. So also mm. training those mm. teachers in those schools to, mm. to work with those, because they have a lot of children in those schools, to work with those children in those schools. Once we're able to touch those two sectors, 
the amount of impact in being able to touch all these children will be huge because our ultimate aim is to create, that's in our foundation, is to create a STEM pipeline of a lot of our children. In fact, we have a goal, two million children who will be innovators, who will be creators right here, not just Nigeria, but across Africa. And when I say creators, innovators, we're all using our tablets, Facebook, mm. Instagram, mm. minds, people came up with this. Imagine mm. the imagination and the ideas that some of our children in these classrooms have. If we can unleash it, if we can give them the freedom, the skills, the abilities to be able to think and actually start creating these things. Imagine what Africa will look like in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Okay, so I'm going to come to um, education funding in another level, but I want to ask this question. You just mentioned learning methods. Now, I noticed that that's one thing that um, even some of our teachers have not actually mastered when it comes. So what do you think? I remember in school, I had a lecturer who made his class so fun because of his learning method, his teaching method. So he would actually use the case study method more. Mm. And it made a lot of sense to us, maybe because of the course being low. So I don't know. What do you think should be done concerning teaching methods in Nigeria? We need to connect learning to the real world. There's an object, well, will I say object, aim. The aim, the end goal for education is not just education for itself, mm. not for the certificate. Okay. But what are you going to use that education for? Are you, going to, are you going to become a lawyer? Are you going to help people? Are you going to solve problems? In fact, really, it's solving problems. That's, to me, that's really what education comes down to. It depends on what problems you want to solve, but really, in the end, it's about solving problems. So you just coming out and saying, oh, I got a 2-1 or a 2-2. Two, two. No, what are you doing? You have that learning now. There are opportunities, there are situations around you, challenges around you. How do you now fine tune the learning that you have to the situations, the challenges, the opportunities you see around you? That's what education is about. And that's what education should be about. When the teachers are teaching in the classroom, that's the way they should be gearing teaching towards. Mm. And that's what we're trying to do. Whenever we're working with our teachers in science, in mathematics, in engineering, be it um, the little ones, because I believe in catching them young, all the way from kindergarten, we work with them to secondary school level. We talk about projects, we talk about how we're going to recycle plastic, how we're going to create solar energy. We talk mm. about these kind of challenges when we have programs for our children, we call them boot camps. And also when we're training the teachers, that you really have to talk over and over and over about solving problems. Mm. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, actually. <laughs> I, did talk, like, I, I wish we had a lot of time or more time to actually discuss this because we can't actually just um, talk about it enough. But I believe that we're going to get more time soon. We'll have you back on the show so we could talk we more about to. this. But how can people follow you? They can follow us on our website. Yes, you okay, can. Okay, I can mention our website. Okay, it's Charisma for You. No H, that's C A R I S M A 4. That's the number 4. Yes, we're mathematicians. <laughs> then the letter U dot com, charisma for you dot com, and also on Instagram, charisma for you. I said Instagram, Twitter, charisma for you, mm -hmm. and on Facebook, charisma for you. Okay, there you have it, charisma for you. That's yeah. how to follow her. Thank you so much for coming. To uh, so enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.